So he ran the boat traffic through ad form in Germany uh, without any quaker. He didn't uh, need to use a quaker because ad form uh, is one of those DSPs that doesn't have any creative pre-approval. So you can uh, upload and you can run anything there and uh, it will automatically run programmatically everywhere. Hey, what's up? This is Stan. Thanks very much for tuning in. This is a podcast on a conference and the name of the conference is Affiliate World Bangkok. And here with me, I have Blagoj Nikushev, who is the CEO and owner of Zimatic. Zimatic is a traffic hub that provides high quality agency ad accounts for many services such as like Facebook, Google, uh, Tabula and many others. And today we're actually going to talk not specifically about tabula facebook accounts or anything else we're going to talk about programmatic traffic which we've talked about in the previous podcast Blago, what's up how's it going yeah super fine man thank you we have a boot here and it's been uh, very it's been amazing so far it's been very busy right yeah super busy a lot of the uh, indian uh, ecosystem came here so it's been even busier than in barcelona absolutely i also noticed that i wonder what will happen in dubai yeah, we'll see. We'll see, <laughs> we'll yes. see it. So can you tell me, like, uh, what is programmatic traffic? Uh, basically, programmatic traffic is a traffic that you can buy, buy through uh, so-called DSPs program, uh, programmatically. It could be the same traffic as you buy in Taboo and Outbrain, for example, or, or in Google traffic. But you buy through different means. You know, there is a, uh, there are a big marketplace for traffics, uh, like uh, ad exchanges out there. And the only way to buy traffic from them is to tap them through the different so-called DSPs. Uh, you can imagine that as running Google Ads, you know, how to run Google Ads, right? You just uh, go there, you pick up uh, your audience. You want to target all the uh, sites with woman on audience, 30 to 50 so far, and uh, upload your creatives and Google itself decides which uh, websites to show your uh, ads on, right? So programmatic traffic is basically that, but it's uh, not uh, limited only to Google. For example, if you get uh, the higher, the enterprise version of Google Ads, which is called Display Video 360, it's available only to large agencies and enterprise clients. You can uh, buy not only Google traffic there, like display traffic, you can buy uh, whatever uh, you need. It has uh, direct uh, connection to more than 800 other exchanges out there. So you can buy the Google traffic, you can buy the board traffic as well from the DV360. So uh, this means that if you need to go into a specific website, for example, um, if we use a bestseller for affiliates like MSN.com, you know, MSN.com, this is the holy grail of all the guys running crypto out there. Everybody wants to be there. Uh, but uh, MSN.com is not uh, available only in Taboo, right? Everybody, what everybody does right now is to get Taboo accounts, run uh, ads in MSN. If they block the account, the account for any reason, they open new accounts and so on and so forth. MSN.com sells their traffic to more than 10 different uh, so-called SSPs. SSPs are the supply side platform. So this is, this is the software that the publisher actually used to monetize their traffic, right? One of the SSPs is uh, Taboo, so they sell part of their traffic to, to, to Taboo, but they sell all, all, uh, as well to Xander, they sell to Google, they send to uh, they sell to Bing and so on and so forth. So if you need to uh, reach MSN traffic, you can do that in multiple ways, not only through Taboo, which is something that actually almost nobody knows in the affiliate industry, right? DSPs are kind of like these uh, consolidated uh, hubs that buy tra traffic from different sources. Yeah, right. Yeah, basically, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. These are hubs, uh, there are different tiers of DSPs. There are super huge DSPs like uh, DV360, Outform and so on. These are the tier one DSPs. They are the best connected, but uh, they're very hard to get and very expensive because you need to run huge traffic. You need to want to know what you're doing and, and so, on, so on in order to use them. Then there are tier two DSPs like smaller app networks out there. Uh, they have, uh, they could have their own traffic, or they could just tap into the, the different uh, marketplaces for traffic and allow you to buy a mix of traffic, right? So uh, you have two parts of uh, the story to the programmatic traffic. One of them is the SSP, which uh, the publishers uh, use to sell their traffic, right? And the other one is DSP. This is the demand side platform. 
Uh, as a, you can uh, imagine DSP as, uh, in, as Google Ads, as I told you. You just uh, open the interface, you upload your creatives, you do some targeting, you know, audience and uh, age or uh, geolocation and so on. And the DSP takes care to actually optimize uh, the traffic. You know, they, uh, this is called a real-time bidding. So they bid uh, your, uh, your creatives against other creatives, your bid against, against other bids. So you can actually buy all the traffic in the world through a DSP, right? So uh, in my experience, uh, you know, most of the majority of the industry, like the affiliate media buyers, uh, they don't know what programmatic is or how to actually run any affiliate ads there. It's right? really funny. Yes. So uh, yesterday I've been to a mastermind of uh, affiliates and I've asked one of the top affiliates, uh, what do you think about programmatic? The very first thing he said is that it's a scam. However, the second one said, like, why is it a scam? If you know how to use it, it's actually a good uh, traffic source to diversify, your, uh, like, uh, to diversify with. What do you think? Why uh, in affiliate industry, uh, many people don't utilize uh, programmatic traffic and actually even some of them think it's a scam? Um, maybe because uh, they're uh, not informed enough about programmatic, you know, this is the main reason. Uh, I'm not saying that there isn't any scam in the programmatic business, right? But there is scam everywhere, right? Uh, and when I'm talking about scam, it's not scam, it's just uh, shitty traffic, right? You, but you can buy the same uh, low quality traffic from Google Ads, for example, if you don't know what they're doing. You just put the money in, say, okay, I want to buy any traffic without any targeting or backlist or anything in Taboo as well. And you buy traffic that probably won't convert well. The same is in programmatic. If you, it's just a tool, you know? If you know how to use the tool and uh, which tool to use, you can be very successful. If you don't know that, uh, you can be fleeced and uh, lose your money without a lot of results. Plus, uh, you have to choose carefully which programmatic tools you're going to use, right? Because uh, in the programmatic business, in the app tech business, uh, basically, it's a very non-transparent business, right? I'm not sure how aware you are, but uh, do you know how Google charges? What, what's the main profit of Google for their ads? For example, you put an ad on a certain website. What's the monetization way? How, uh, how much does Google get out of it? Do you know? Well, they get a percentage per click of the click? Per impression. Per, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, uh, what kind of percentage? Can you guess? 50. 60. 60? Yeah. Uh, 50 was actually just a ballpark number. Really? 60%? Yeah, they get 30% out of the SSP side from the publishers. They get 30% of them. And they get another 30 from uh, your side, from the buyer side, right? So basically, if you pay $1, only like uh, four, uh, 40 cents get to the publisher, right? I see. So they're the big winner out there. And uh, the problem is that they're not transparent about their fees. And in this whole industry, nobody's transparent about their fees. Maybe this is the reason some of the guys think that it's, it's a scam, right? And it is a scam uh, so sometimes. But uh, if you work with somebody, for example, we help uh, uh, the affiliates we work with. We provide DV360 accounts, platform, and everything. But uh, I've noticed that if we, if we just give the, the accounts, uh, they don't uh, get a lot of success there, you know? We need to choose specifically the accounts and the DSP that has uh, the most traffic in their vertical industry that uh, they need, right? So there are different types of DSPs. For example, if you go to uh, an ad, ad form, which is again a tier one DSP, very big, big DSP with a lot of traffic, uh, and you plan to uh, advertise in Australia, Australia, you won't be able to because they don't have Australian traffic. And you just uh, pay like uh, thousands of dollars. You sign a contract for a one year with the monthly minimums and so on and so forth. And then you won't be able to do anything in Australia, right? So you, uh, the idea is that you should inform, you should educate the advertisers how to actually use that in order to make them profitable. So this is part of what So there's a learning curve yeah, uh, with, yeah, uh, with programmatic traffic. What do you think? What how, If an affiliate... Uh, a, a, like a media buying team or affiliate marketing team or even a solo affiliate wants to try DSP, what would be uh, the shortest way to overcome this learning curve and start earning as soon as possible? Yeah, I don't want to sound it as self-advertisement, but just uh, come to us. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Because it's, uh, you, you can do that yourself, basically. You can open an account, you can sign a contract, 
But there are a lot of uh, tips and tricks how to do that. I see. Usually when we give out an account, we do a training first. You know, we, sh we show, uh, show them the platform, we help them set up their first campaigns, we answer any questions because it's rather more complex than usual kind of, uh, of accounts. You need to know what you're doing, how to do that and so on. Uh, if you do it, uh, you can run uh, something simple, of course, but if you need to get results, you, you have to know what they're doing. For example, um, there, uh, there are a lot of uh, ways to actually buy the same traffic that you, bo that you buy in Taboola with using uh, Adform, for example, but in all, in, not in all countries. So we need to pick up uh, what's your vertical, what's your geo, and suggest uh, which is the best DSP and how to go about it, basically. Can you actually run Gray Hat, Black Hat on, uh, on program using programmatic traffic? Yeah, absolutely. You can. You can. And will there be account bans? Of course there will, but how would you compare the ban rates if we compare it with Google or Facebook? It's a very tricky question, you know, because um, if you... Um, I can give you an example, right? We had a client uh, who used to run crypto ads uh, for the Bitcoin era thing. That... Elon Musk. Yeah, yeah. It was even before Elon Musk. Okay, right? okay. So they just uh, run straight away to the pre-lender. Like uh, I got rich on the second day, bought Ferrari for my brother, right? Okay. Uh, so uh, he came to us and he wanted to buy uh, traffic from big news uh, sites, Taboo traffic. So he weren't able to run in Taboo because uh, Taboo was blocking their, uh, his accounts all the time because of the things he he running. Okay. But uh, he managed to run. Uh, we gave him an Adform account. Adform is a tier one DSP, as I mentioned. Okay. So he ran Taboo traffic through Adform in Germany uh, without any quoker. He didn't uh, need to use a quoker because Adform uh, is one of those DSPs that doesn't have any creative pre-approval. So you can uh, port and you can run anything there and uh, it will automatically run programmatically everywhere, this thing. So if somebody uh, says uh, from the publisher, hey, I don't want this ad, you know, what's that, and files a complaint uh, against that, eventually they will block your account. But uh, ad forum on their side, they don't, don't do anything to, uh, to see what kind of ads were and so on. And they, they don't care. They just sell the traffic. They resell the traffic. Right. So there are two, two main advantages, right, using programmatic traffic. The first one is that uh, you can have access to multiple traffic sources. And the second thing, you can actually get, like, restricted less. Yeah. yeah. But do I understand correctly that this comes at a cost? Because programmatic is a kind of a hub for different sources of traffic, it also costs more. Not, uh, not, not every time. Sometimes it costs more because uh, there is something called uh, tech fee. Tech fee is the charge that actually the DSP uh, uh, gets on top of the traffic, but uh, uh, you always pay some kind of fee. You just don't know about it usually. For example, if, as I told you, if you go to Google, you pay like at least 30% uh, on top of the traffic and they get another 30% out of the publisher. But you don't know about this. You don't know about this. But if you get, uh, for example, a DV360 account, which is the Google Enterprise version, you don't uh, pay 30%. You can pay like 9 or 15 percent, right? So you can buy the same Google traffic, but uh, much cheaper than uh, you would buy otherwise. Plus, you can connect uh, PMP deals. PMP deal is a direct deal with a website, for example. So they can, you can buy premium or you can buy guaranteed their inventory. You can get uh, just a PMP deal and attach it to the DSP, which you won't be able to do in Google Ads. But just to uh, take the conversation a little back uh, to finish with the case study, because I think it would be interesting about the ad form. So the guys, uh, we gave them an ad form account. They managed to spend like 200,000 euro in one month in ad form account without any quoker running uh, in two websites in Germany. Like it was like T online D and uh, one other, right? Without any quoking or anything, they just uh, put the ads and they spent 200,000 uh, with a uh, good ROI and that they were super happy about it. Do they continue to do it? Yeah, but through another account later. I see. What's the future you think of programmatic? Will it continue to grow or you think there, there can, what do you think what will be the main challenges for programmatic traffic? The main challenge is, is awareness, right? Because um, the... Yeah, but as more awareness comes, I think there will be more, uh, more checks added. 
What do you think? Will yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's like that everywhere. You know, everything's tightening up. Tightening up. Like uh, Facebook changes uh, their algorithms all the time. Google becomes more restrictive. Everybody becomes more restrictive. But the programmatic is usually where the play the regulations hit hit last, right? Yeah. So if uh, it, it becomes super tight to run somewhere, you can still run programmatic because, for example, Taboo has one algorithm checking out the creatives in their own uh, platform and another checking out the creatives coming through their programmatic side, right? For uh, Taboo, usually uh, they got a lot of in inventory, uh, a lot of impressions and so on. So they first uh, sell that through their self-serve platform, directly to Taboo clients. What's left, they sell to programmatically to the big ad exchanges and you can buy it there. But they, don't, they aren't so, so strict for the programmatic because the technology is different, right? So you can uh, run on Taboo site a lot more things, a lot less restrictive than you could uh, direct to Taboo. And uh, it will tighten up at some point, but uh, uh, the thing is that uh, you don't actually need uh, Taboo to get the same traffic. This is what I'm trying to say. For example, if we get back a little bit of the conversation, if you want to run MSN traffic, MSN sells traffic to uh, Taboo and 10 others, right? You just sent all of these um, uh, companies that buy... Everybody goes to Tabula, but nobody goes to 10 others, right? Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. because they, you don't know them, right? Right. So, uh, and uh, some things can be run in Tabula, but some can, cannot. But if uh, Tabula has a restrictive uh, policy of some kind for this MSN traffic, and maybe one of the others won't have the same policy and you'll be able to run completely legit uh, with them with absolutely no problem, right? So you just need to find the perfect mix and the perfect supplier of the traffic you need. And instead of the beauty of the programmatic and the big DSPs is that you don't have to try like 100 different ad networks separately in order to see what works and what doesn't. You just get one account and you, you can try everything. You can run the same ad on like uh, 800 different ad networks targeting, uh, for example, one country with several publishers, right? And you can see, you can measure what brings you results, what not, and optimize, right? So there is a wide world of uh, traffic out there, with, and uh, you can test everything uh, at the same time. It's much quicker to do that. Really cool. So like uh, programmatic is a hot pancake right now that everybody should utilize. Well, there you go, guys. If you're interested, uh, you have the context of Zimatic in the description of this video. Uh, Blagoje, thanks very much for talking about programmatic. It's a very interesting topic. I'm really not sure why nobody's using. Maybe you will not be needing to use multi-login to access uh, uh, DSP, but that's totally fine. H here you go. Uh, free information. Blagoje, thanks very much. Thank you, man.